What's up YouTube, this is LDS Reliance. I'm back out in the solar powered shed working on the system today. It's been a couple weeks since I worked on the system. Uh, as you've seen in this video series, I'm redoing the solar panel system. Everything's going but the solar panels. And so I'm nearing the finish line now, but I need a few more components. And so today what I have, I have a new charge controller. This is a TriStar MPPT 60 by Morningstar Corporation. Um, and I will go into the reasons why I chose that model in a future video. Um, it was between that and a Midnight Classic 150, but ultimately I chose this one, and like I said, I, I just will skip the explanation for this particular video, and we'll just concentrate on install. Uh, over here I have a remote monitor for this system, so basically that will allow me to um, put a panel, um, I have to mount the, the controller underneath here for various reasons, but um, I will have this remote monitor. I'll be able to, to put it more at eye level um, when I first walk in the shed and it'll be more accessible to check the parameters uh, and so forth. I'll also be able to monitor from inside the house, um, over the internet, or over my network anyway, and uh, so that'll be really cool. That'll be a huge, huge improvement to my system. I'll be able to keep track of the health and everything. Uh, and then the final piece right here is a remote temperature sensor. So I'll be able to correct for colder weather and things like that, um, which will monitor the temperature of the battery bank and then compensate the charges um, accordingly. So big, big step up in, in uh, efficiency in this system. And so without further ado, I'll go ahead and get started installing things. All right, the first thing that we need to do is we need to remove this panel right here that allows access to the, the wire terminals. And then we need to remove the knockouts either on the side or bottom, depending on how we're going to mount it. Okay, I plan on mounting this to a vertical surface. Uh, and this is the north wall of the shed, so it'll get the least amount of sunlight so that will be good for the, this is a, I don't know if you can see it, but this is a pretty sizable passive heat sink on this thing. This thing does not have any active fans in it. And that's one of the reasons why I like it. So you can see the depth of the, the, fan, the fins go pretty, are pretty substantial and this thing can get pretty hot. So we want to keep it in as cool a part of the shed as possible. That's why I'm putting it on a north facing wall. So. I'm going to take a piece of wood and mount it between these two studs on this wall and then we're going to figure out which knockouts we want to knock out, whether we want to go this way out or whether we want to come straight down. So I won't worry about the knockouts right now. First I'm going to attach this piece of wood and then we'll figure that out from there. Okay, so the battery terminal is right here, and these, these are the, the uh, negative terminals, common negative, and then this is for the solar array. So I'm going to come straight down with the, the battery cables, and I'm going to knock out two, punch, two of these knockouts on the bottom, and for the solar array, I'm gonna come through on actually this side, on the right side, because they come from this side of the shed uh, on the roof. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll get this thing mounted to the piece of wood and get started on wiring. Okay, next there is a hanger that this comes with that needs to be put on the back here for vertical mounting. So I'm going to use the supplied screw to attach this. And then we're going to put this on the piece of wood, I'm going to drill a hole, put a screw in there at the top. You probably can't see that, I guess, but I'm going to put a, a screw into the wood and then slide this on top, check for plumb, and then put two more screws in the bottom here to, in a triangular fashion, to attach the, it's pretty heavy, so you do probably need at least three screws in it. Okay. 
Okay, so I got the thing mounted and it's the next day. I had to stop and do some other things the rest of yesterday evening, but I'm back at it today. And what I need to do, uh, and I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see this, so let's adjust. So I have some spools of wire here. What I had to do was lengthen the wire that comes from the ceiling from the solar panels. Uh, my solar charge controller was not this low before. It was above this uh, load center panel. And so I just need to lengthen the wires by a little bit <clears throat> and then reroute them um, a little bit to the right. So I'm just kind of rerouting them a little bit. Uh, no new wiring really, just, just lengthening out uh, with the same gauge and everything like that. Okay, actually before that, I read some of the instructions on the Morningstar controller as I was doing the wiring and it recommends that we install the battery terminals first before the uh, solar charge, uh, the solar inputs. So we'll go ahead and do that. <clears throat> so I have some four gauge wire, this brand new wire um, that I'm going to be putting, uh, coming from the battery box that you guys saw on a previous episode, coming through the side and up through the bottom uh, cutouts and into the charge controller. So I'll go ahead and do that now. So you guys will get a kick out of this. And I ordered some four gauge connectors because I ran out of them. And as you'll see here, if this will focus, that's what it says on here is their four gauge ring terminals. But guess what was in the box? It was some kind of lipstick or something, Burt's Bees lipstick. So that is not helpful. So does anybody notice anything different about this picture? I'll give you a hint. Yeah, so I had to move this part up a little ways because silly me, and this happens all the time when you DIY, I did not take into account the raising of the, the door for the, or the lid for the battery bank box. So I had to cut out a notch in the top corner with my sawzall and notch it there for that little uh, support and then relocate the charge controller a few inches over. So luckily we weren't too far away or too far gone into the uh, wiring. So it wasn't a big deal, but I just, I like, this is why I like documenting this kind of stuff for you guys and taking you through projects because nothing's going, it's not always going to work out perfect for you. And, and anybody that says that they, they do it all clean and perfect and tidy and, and, uh, and without any mistakes or any problems or any things that they forgot the first time is lying to you. So anyway, we got that moved and now it's back to wiring with this four gauge flexible welding wire. Okay, we're running out of daylight quickly, but I've got the battery wires connected in there and in the interest of keeping the battery or the uh, video time as short as possible, I'm not showing every little pull of wire, but we'll get the, uh, the solar panel wire, which is the skinnier red one here, and then a skinnier black one over here. We'll get those connected up and that will conclude this video. I was going to install the remote uh, panel as well, the monitoring panel that I bought from Morningstar, but, uh, but I'll have to do that another time. So sorry this uh, video series is dragging on, but that's the way life goes. So I'll go ahead and get that connected. Okay, so here's what it looks like. We've got the positive wire of the solar panel array. We've got the negative wire of the solar panel array. We've got the negative wire going to the battery and the positive wire going to the battery. So that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this time. I'm going to go ahead and put the, the cover over the front of it. And I'll just show you real quick on the inside. Routed the, the cables out here, just kind of held them in place a little bit there. We can still open the, the lid a little bit. I'm going to probably put some sort of a latch here so I can hold it open. And then we've got the everything wired up inside. The, both of the positive connections go there. Both of the negative connections go there. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. I really appreciate you watching my video to this point. Go ahead and hit subscribe so you can see more of them in the future.